want to say you are a lovely group of people. Thank you so much for coming tonight. I'm going to tell you a little story. <clears throat> Mother Superior always used to say, watch out for those religious cranks, Sister Veronica. When I started working at the hospice, I had a touch of the crank about me. I think maybe that's why they gave me the old heave-ho from the convent. <laughs> but I've kept my vow of chastity and I've made a pilgrimage to Lourdes. My job is to ease the way for those who are dying. I've done this for the last couple of years. I work mainly here at St. Vincent's. During the day, I have a boring secretarial job, which is how I fund my career as a saint. <laughs> I was much more idealistic when I first started. I just left the convent. I guess I thought working with the dying would give me spiritual gold stars. I thought maybe I'd be able to impart my great wisdom to those in most need of improvement. I wanted to witness deathbed conversions, see shafts of light emanating from the heavens, multicolored auras hovering above the heads and those of the process of expiring. I always imagined they'd go out expressing their gratitude for all I had done. A quick joke. Have you heard about the man who's lost his left side? No one? <laughs> He's all right now. <laughs> all right now. <laughs> we, tell, <laughs> we tell a lot of jokes in my line of work. You take that away. Cut him in half. You can keep him. What are we going to do about him? I just said he's yours. You found him. I don't want him. Chet doesn't like cats. Oh, I knew you would do this. Please don't start in. We got to get it set up. Unless, how about we simplify things? We sell everything to split the cash. Even the cobalt glass? Yes. And Aunt Billy's hooked rug? Say, how's she doing? She's on medication. Sell the rug. Hmm. I'm not selling the mannequin edge. I don't care what you say. Hmm, take it. It's yours. And the chromium lamp? I love that lamp. It's yours. And the Barcelona chair. Oh, the Barcelona chair is mine. Fuck it. Take it. Take everything. I won't be Jewish about it. Why didn't you tell me we were going to be playing Christians and Jews today? I would have worn my yellow star. I gotta go. Where are you going? I'm not feeling so hot, so let's just make it another day. No, sit down. No, 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 don't push me. Sorry. I don't like this any more than you do, but we gotta get it done. It's been six months. Divorce isn't final till the property settlement. Solve. What, Rich? I, um... What? Never mind. What? What? You always do that. Right, I want the chair. You can keep the fucking Barcelona chair if Chet wants it so bad. And what are you going to do about the paintings? You're going to sell the Paul Cadmus? Yes. You love the Cadmus. And who's going to buy the Burgess drawings? Did you hear Kenny died? Donate them to the Metropolitan. Just what they always wanted. The world's largest collection of magic marker hustler portraits. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's yours. Did you commission them? We'll split them up. I get the blondes, you get the blacks, or vice versa. It's, it's all yours. Then you take the Mickey Mouse collection. No, just sell it. You don't sell collectibles. Not right now. <laughs> What's with this money mania? Between the book and the catering, I thought you were doing well. Well, I want a swimming pool. You don't swim. Then I want a Mercedes. You don't drive. It's Chet, and he'll bankrupt you. I don't believe I just said that. Your book's beautiful. I never thanked you for the cover for it. How's it selling? It's not bad for short stories. Mm. Everyone talks about your no. photo. And Edward, My book is terrific, really. I'm glad you like it. One minor thing. What's that? I thought the dedication was a bit oh, come on, why are you doing I mean, this? Don't you think going to Kavafi in Greek oh, is a little coy? Please. Why didn't you just say, oh, to Chet, whose beautiful buns inspired these tales? Jesus Christ, can you... I'm sorry. I sold the IBM stock. Oh. You're right about it. You're always right about money. Here. This includes the thousand I borrowed for the periodontist. You sure? Well, it's yours. I'm not desperate for it. Take it. I don't want Damn it. Damn it, just... Okay. And that makes us even now. 
clouds and trees. Oh, come on, let's get on with this. Is he waiting for you outside? You could have told him to come up. Just can't, okay? The copper pots, I won't be needing the copper pots. Why not? When you and Chet move into your little space, I'm sure you'll want to cook again. I just don't want that. Hmm. People change, plus I've been eating out a lot, so... Chet can't cook? <laughs> you take the rowing machine. Have you lost weight? And the trampoline. There's some black forest taking No, just stop. Out. Stop what? Just stop. I can't. Come on, we're almost through. I have feelings. Oh, you only have one feeling, Saul. He won't make you happy. Oh, here we go again. Do it. Just take out me. No, 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 just take out I haven't been myself. I, I need it. Nothing is worth this. I need it. Don't okay. go, please. Well, I visited Teddy today at St. Vincent's. It's very depressing. He's lying there in bed out of it. He's been out of it since the time we went to see him. He's not in any pain, snorting his imaginary cocaine, doing his poppers. <laughs> sometimes he's watching his mom's floor, and he's talking to her in Spanish. And sometimes he's having sex. You can see him having sex right there in front of you. He doesn't know you're there. Jimmy died, as you must have heard. I went out to San Francisco to be with him for the last few months. I'm sure you heard that, too. Well, he was in a coma for a month. Everybody wanted to pull the plug on him, but they were afraid of legal complications. I held his hand. He couldn't talk, but I saw his eyelids flutter. Yeah, he knew I was with Well, Harry has KS, and Matt has trouble reading. He went to get tested today, and I haven't slept well in weeks. Every morning, I examine my body for swellings and marks. I am petrified of every rash and every pimple, even though I tested negative. If I cough, I think of Teddy. I wish he would die. He is dead. He may as well be dead. So why, why can't he just die? I feel the disease is closing in on me. All my activities are life and death. Keep up my blue cross, up my reps, and keep eating my vegetables. Sometimes I'm so frightened I go back on my resolutions. I drink too much, I smoke a joint, and I find myself in bars and clubs where I stand around and watch. Reminds me of accounts of Europe during the Black Plague, groping in the dark, dancing till you drop. The new wave is the corpse look. I'm very frightened, and I miss you. Well, say something, damn it! I have it. You what? You have what? He has AIDS. I don't think that's funny. Don't be ridiculous. Well, that's the bad news. You ran the goddamn The good thought. news is that I only have the swollen glands. You call it the pre AIDS condition. I've lost AIDS. some weight. I'm in a state of shock. Move in with me. Just I try to my temperature goes up and down. Your suppressor cells outnumber your helper cells. I don't care what he has, Betty. He's my brother. You're my lover. You're my buddy. Well, Rich and I started the business about a year ago, but now we're got out that Rich is ill. I tried to explain he doesn't touch I'm the I'm not in the habit of kissing my brother. I they won't listen. touched him on the back when I arrived and when I left. I mean, why would they? I wonder if I use a caterer who has AIDS. Doctors make mistakes all the time. I can put you on AZT. And Ken's hamadine miss. I got this job. If you don't mind, I'll sleep on the couch tonight because you've been sweating a lot. I can't turn it down. The work is pure drug. And who wants to tour Canada in January? When he offered me a cup of coffee, fortune. I told him I'd have a can of beer. You know, I can understand what he's been going through. Myself, I've been wrestling with cancer for a while. You remember now. when they told my niece she had skin no, cancer? I'm with it. Turned out to be dry skin. If you don't mind, I'll start using the red soap dish and you start using the blue. Chris, I've been putting the box to you Nelly Christ. for months and I now you're in the, the bathroom. So even though I had to take a leak so bad I could taste it. Now that's paranoid. You know, I wonder if it's safe to use the same telephone or whether I'm being paranoid. I know I'm being paranoid. Chet, you've been out every night to sleep. You have to go out again. I know you're scared, Betty, but I'm not going to tell my own brother he's not welcome in my house. He's something from outside. He's spent every Christmas with us since we've been married, and this year will be no exception. Forget I said anything. Just don't wake me up when you come in. You're making me choose between you and my brother. See you later. I've been dating this guy, Mick. Can you imagine me dating? Well, he's very nice, and he's got a lot of money, and he's not you impressed with my life, so the theater. You're walking straight, out on me! We're going to Betty's Rich. mother for Christmas. I need some space to get my head together. Well, what did you expect? Chet, please, I need you! Don't, Don't touch, touch me! Please, forgive me, Anne. 
This thing has me blown away. If it weren't for the kids, I just don't know what the hell we're going Bastards. to do. Bastards! The simple fact is that we know very little about a car in the deficiency syndrome. Doctors, it's tell me that you... What are my chances? We have some, some highly effective, effective treatments. treatments. Doctor, tell me that you... What are my chances? Well, the medical advances are astounding. What are my chances? We're highly optimistic. Am I gonna make it, doctors? Yes or no? Just hang in there. Rich, we, we don't, don't know. know. And for three months, she kept it from me? I don't want your pity. You're my friend. You'll stay with me till you get better. Aren't you afraid I'm going to infect you? We'll take reasonable precautions. Paper plates, plastic cups, face masks, and gloves. You have and HIV. You're not radioactive. I prefer to live alone. Thanks. You need me. Besides, if I live with you, where am I going to bring my tricks? You still pick up people? I go to bars. I pick up guys. But I make sure to get a medical report before you leave. There you go. I gotta tell you something. Uh, you like something, King. What? Whip, scold, and shower, fit. It's not that, no. You know, I once picked up a guy who liked to be yelled at in German. The only German I know is the Ode to Joy from Beethoven's Night. Oh, Brutsch, lieben Garde, Funken, Aschte, Schloss, Elysium, Dunkoff! I have a, I have a very mild case of lymphadenopathy. What's that? It's an AIDS-related oh, condition. Shit. I, I just have a slow uh, glance. No Good luck. Oh, man. So I stopped telling them. You mean you bring them home without telling them? No, we do it there at the bar. How can you? Well, I hide myself in dark corners where I can hide my lumps. I'm like a shark or a barracuda, and I snap them up. And I How can them. you make a joke about something like this? Oh, I don't care. I'm gonna die anyways. Might as well take as many as I can with me. And I've pissed in the Croton Reservoir, so I'm gonna infect the whole no fucking city. No fucking around. Just give me a straight answer. Do you still pick up people? Or maybe I should wear a sign around my neck and ring a bell and yell, AIDS, I've got AIDS, stand clear. Would that make you happy? Or maybe I should bury myself in the ground, douse myself with kerosene, and light a final cigarette. No muss, no fuss. Is that what you want? Forgive me for not trusting you. I'm just, I'm frightened of it. I don't know what I'm saying half the time. Then how the fuck do you think I feel? My lover leaves me. My family won't let me near them. I lose my business. I can't pay my rent. How the fuck do you think I feel? You'll stay here with me. Oh, until death do us part. I love oh, no, you. I don't want your love. Well, take what you can... I didn't mean that. I love you. I always have. Well, you have nowhere else to go. You'll have to stay with me. You were joking about picking up people. Well, what do you think? What would you do in my place? I wouldn't. I. Therapy. I don't know what I do. Jesus! Oh my God! I told you all about myself. Oh my God! I really spilled my guts to you. Like I needed to do that. I'm telling you. And you know what? Maybe. Maybe I shouldn't say this. Christ, you know something? I like you very much. I like you. And even. Even though you are a writer and everything, you know, would you like to come home with me? Come on. Oh, no, I, I'd like to very much, but I, I, I have an appointment. Then tomorrow. How about tomorrow? I don't want to lose track of you. I don't know when I've had such a good time. You know, I can talk to you, you know? I, I've, been, I've enjoyed myself yeah. too. It's just... Then maybe we'll have dinner. Maybe go to the movies. Do you like the movies? Oh my god, there's this maple door, but just spec that MoMA? <laughs> or maybe we can see the new Everett Twins in Thank, Thanks, but I what? I have to tell you something. Yeah? I, I have a... Uh, I have... Oh, you have a lover? Oh, you have a lover? I knew it! You're too nice to be unattached! No, no, I, I have a... I have a lover. You have a lover? How did we know where he is? I don't mean Jet, I mean me. What about me? Pardon me. What about me? Yo, you, yo. What about me? <clears throat> what about me? What about you? Well, I'm a very interesting guy. And uh, you seem like a very interesting guy. Let's talk. And if you don't want to talk, we can go back there and we can, uh... I'll do anything you want. Anything. I want you. Get the fuck out of my face! Yeah, can't you see I'm trying to cruise that guy over there? 
Well, fuck you! What was that? Give me a Jack Daniel straight up and no ice. Make it a double and a Heineken chaser. Double Jack up and a high and back. You didn't chip? No ice! No ice! Chuck, I hate ice. Chet. <laughs> well, put it there, Chet! I mean, Chuck, you come here often. Don't you just got chip I made here on Jock's track day? I don't know, I haven't been here since the slave auction. Look familiar. Go to the spy. Been there. It's quiet for a Friday night. Oh, I know where. How much action? Limelight? Same. Nah. They're home watching Portos. Bookstore. Christopher, yeah, I've been there. Not you. Oh, you gotta be real careful. We're having sex on the phone. Right, me, I'm HIV negative. Can you prove it? Kidding. <laughs> okay, right, you gotta be real careful. Run six miles a day. My philosophy is if you got it, you got it. Nothing more you can do about it. Same. So, uh, what are you up for? Right to the point, don't you? Poor bastards that got it. Cancer, pneumonia, herpes all over. I mean, I kill myself have to go through all that shit. Yet I got to perform fellatio on it. So what are you up for, Daddy? Slash my wrist with the grain? Oh, me, Tom. Subway tracks? Oh, I got some beautiful. Ever drove opium? Oh, I have a water pipe. You can, uh, smoke a different subway comfort. Or maybe I mix myself with Judy Garland. Forty reds and a quart of vodka. Fuck the beer. Oh, uh, we're roommates now, but, uh, what about you? Glory be to God for devil's things. I'm free white and 24. The sky is of couple color as a brinded cow. I know this sounds stupid, but take care of your health. For rose bowls all in stipple upon trout that swim. You better. Well, I don't care what anybody says. I believe that somewhere, somewhere deep down. How long do anything you want? Beyond all this incredible pain and anxiety and fear and terror. No eyes! Anything? I believe that there might be. That there could be. That there is. Exactly. You're drinking too much. I believe in a perfect tear. Shining. Powerful. Free. Vitamins. Pure. Condom. Dildo. Diet. Free. Dungeon. Acupuncture. Truthful. Tennis. Interferon. Beautiful. Beer. Water sports. Asshole. Hey, hey. I'm killing hey, you, hey, 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 You can't follow no, me. What's he doing now? You hear me, motherfucker? He's decomposing. Cure me! Come on. Keep him moving. Oh, I'm a very bad person. You are an asshole. I wanted to go to bed with that I guy. I practically beg you to you be want to know something? Me. And what do you I was going to tell him about me. You disappeared for two weeks. You want to know something? No. I was going to tell him. I almost called the cops. Do you believe me? Believe what? I would never, never would ever, ever do that. Do you remember the one about the Polish lesbian? Never. She liked men. <laughs> <laughs> you asshole. You schmuck. You prick. God, I miss talking dirty. Talking dirty makes it feel like spring. Suck my dick, faggot. Kiss my ass, cocksucker. Sit on it, punk. Lick boot, brute. <laughs> God. I miss sleeves. The whining self-pity of a rainy Monday night in a, in a leather bar in early spring, or five o'clock in a mine shaft with bathtubs full of men just dying to get pissed on or whipped. Or a subway job full of horny high school students. Morocco. Getting raped on a tombstone in Marrakesh. God, I miss it. I miss my filthy old ripped up patch button fly jeans I suddenly saw myself. Our first weekend at the island, remember? It was Labor Day. The Memorial Day. And we did blotter acid. Remember acid before they put speed in it? <laughs> and we drank muscadet when we got thirsty. Which we did a lot. Remember? Remember Sunday afternoon's Blitzstock beer? And suddenly it's Sunday night and you are getting fucked in the oh. second floor window of Hotel Christopher while being cheered on by a mob of hundreds of men. And suddenly, it's Friday night, a week later, and he's moved in, and he's right next to you, oh. and you want him to move out because you met his brother, Rod or Lance. Yeah, Miles. And Miles, late other merchant marines, who's even hungrier. Orgy's at the back. No, afternoons at the Columbus Avenue bookstore, just, ah, uh, ah, uh, 
Give it to me. Give it to me. More. More. Give it to you. More. More. Give it to me. Get out of my way. He's mine. <laughs> give it to you. No, give it to me. And hands off my wallet. Sisters, there's plenty in here for everybody. I'm married. The line forms at the rear. And who's where might that be, sugar? Oh. Oh. <sighs> Vinny? Marty? Well, what are you doing here? I thought you said you were you were getting the papers. You said you were walking the dog. Oh, you trash. <laughs> <laughs> Share. Mwah. I knew why Grand Union wouldn't deliver to our house. God, I miss promiscuous sex. Uh, well, not promiscuous, Saul. It's non permitted, non directive, non authoritarian. Free, wild, rampant. Hot, sweaty, steamy, smelly. Juicy, hunky, funky. Sex. Sex. God, I miss it. No, no, no. It's safe. Well, you don't know what you're doing, no, so. My no, decision. no, no! Best times for me were uh, we're going out with you on shoots. I thought you found them boring. I, I enjoyed them. I was always terrified of boring. Remember staying up all night shooting the harvest moon at Jake's place? Mm -hmm. My fingers got so cold I couldn't change film. Yeah, it was almost the brightest day. Remember that apple tree that stood out in the middle of Jake's pasture? Mm -hmm. The moon like just drained it of color. I remember the smell of the blanket we took out of the barn. Remember, I bet you I could find five constellations? You found six. I never wanted us to break up. Past regression. I always wanted things to remain the same. I'm still like that. I even eat the same things day after day. Pork chops, french fries. No change. I used to love our routine together. I'd go to work, and then when I got back, you'd be there writing. Drinking. i do this, and you do that, and then we'd for a while, while Mission Impossible would be on in the background. And then Star Trek. I never got tired of the same. Day after well, day, we were the same. Well, then we'd have a structure to fall back on when life dealt us its wild cards and its curveballs. I just want to be half alive. Like at the seashore, watching the waves rolling in, hypnotized by the glare of the sun, smelling the sea breeze and the suntan lotion. <laughs> I mean, Mom is what? She's lying there on the Navajo blanket next to Dad with white gunk on her nose. And my baby sister, oh, she stopped crying and she's sucking on the air of her dolly. And Aunt Ellie, the one who told me that I have good taste after she met you. Yeah. Well, she's lying there and snoring next to husband number three. <laughs> and her bazooms are going up and down. Up. They're almost popping out of her bathing suit. It's so peaceful. I was at a gym, soaking in a hot tub when I first heard about AIDS. It was how many years ago? My friend Brian, remember him? Well, he was soaking too. He told me about a mutual friend who had died the week before. It was bizarre, he said. The first person I knew who had AIDS was George. And I had just seen him at the movies, Mommy Dearest, and <laughs> I mean, we had a big laugh together. And I, I remember he had a, he had a little cough. And then I ran into his mother, could have been a week later, and she told me he had died. It was absurd. It was absurd because I had just seen George. The first time it really hit me was when my boss got ill. When Marjorie got out of the hospital, 
I didn't know what to say. I said, wow, you seem so much taller. He said, well, I've lost 45 pounds. The first time I heard about it, I was standing in my kitchen. They hit home after that. I was about to go shopping for my youngest birthday party. The phone rang, it was this doctor calling me by my, son, by my son Bernard. He said all these words I can't pronounce, and then he said, Do, Do you, you understand, understand what, what I told you? I said yes. Right before he hung up, he said, So, so you, you know, know he, he has AIDS. AIDS. The first time that I was heard. the first time I heard that word. About AIDS was in 1981. I was in a 7 a.m. shuttle to Boston, tried to make a 9 o'clock appointment in Cambridge. I looked over the shoulder of the man next to me at his newspaper, and I caught the words promiscuous, homosexual, cancer. I turned white. The word never really registered in my mind until they transferred this guy with AIDS to our unit. Guys were up in arms that they were going to expose us to it or something. I didn't know what to think. I got used to Kenny, though. He uh, wanted to keep working very badly. I think, I think he had he a lot, lot of courage. courage. The first memorial service I went to was on the set of Oh, Calcutta. <sighs> it was for Bill. He was in the theater. They filled the house. You know, he had actually hidden the fact that he was ill for almost a year. And a while beforehand, he asked me if I wanted his dog beautiful white husky. I couldn't I could figure, figure it out. out. He loved that dog. And since that time, I've been to how many memorial services? Seth, Robbie, Fortunato, Francis, Craig, Arthur, Tom, Tim, Christian, Liam. Vienne, Stephen, Russell, Russell. Louis. Larry his lover, Larry, Larry his lover, Danny, JJ, David, Maria, Stuart, Jamal, JJ, JJ. Maria, David. Jamal, Stuart. Jamal, JJ. Larry, Maria, Danny, Jamal, David. Tony. Che Che. Maria. Jamal. Charles. Tony. He told me about a mutual friend who had died the week before. It was bizarre, he said. Brian died last week of the same thing. And he and I once soaked in the same hot tub together, making this kind of human soup. That's all I ever really wanted was to relax. You'll stay with me, I won't bother you. Just until I get back. I understand. You're not coming back to be my lover. Right. Is that okay? Schmuck. Is that okay? Is that okay? It's okay, asshole. Who the fuck wants you anyhow? And when I have guests stay the night, you disappear into your room, right? Right, understood. Have you seen somebody? I said when I have guests. Were you planning an orgy? Just so we understand each other. Right. There is one No, place. you don't have to spend Passover with the tribe this year. But I miss your father. Then go live with him. He loves you very much. Oh, you two could be very well, happy together. He's never stuff. really liked me oh. anyhow. He's always been restored. Are you finished? No! And I won't bring you coffee in bed either, because I only do that for lovers. Oh. Besides, I thing. broke your blue mug oh. on purpose. Oh. <laughs> I'm embarrassed, okay? I just about broke the doctors, the tests. I thought you were insured. I'm pulling a fast one. 
Well, Sue, I'll call Craig. I'll know exactly what to do. Called Craig already. He said not to have high hopes. We'll get by. You'll see. I'll, I'll keep track of every cent you spend on me. I'll, I'll, I'll pay it all back when I can work again, I swear. Not to worry. I'll take it out and trade. to the bars. So, how do you like New York? I only got here yesterday, and Lily's taking me to a show tonight. Do you think success will change me? God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so I know being a pig, but I need headshots by six o'clock. It's a dazzling role for me, and you're such an artist. Rich is the artiste in the family. To be an angel brings all his cameras by the bar. Don't let your cousin push you around the way she does Come me. Come on, so I'll make click click. Unless you like that sort of thing. That's all I get? Leave the pearl alone. A hug and a bitchy remark? That and a subway token. No, gee, Rich, I'm so proud of you. Oh, gee, Rich, I'm so proud of you. I finally have some good news, and he's annoyed at me. Do you want this or not? Well, your brother called while you were out guzzling lunch with your agent, Dr. Mangle. I call him back. <laughs> what do you have to say? Call him and ask him I'm not your secretary. Call him and ask him I'm not your secretary. Well, he forgot my fucking name again. How many years we been together? Too long. Forget my brother. It's my first fucking book. Let's celebrate, huh? You celebrate. I'll throw a party. Oh, you, sir. <laughs> Organic cabbage juice. His brother's a scumbag. He likes you, too. Do you want this or not? Thanks, Chuck. Check. <laughs> You're such a lush. Whatever happened to my own drinking buddy? Do you want to have gay AA meetings? It's great news, babe, for real. No, you really don't give a fuck. Well, just how many copies do you think a book of fairy tales will sell? I think it's a fine day to have my picture taken. If you only knew how much I love doing headshots. Fuck it. I guess I'm being childish. Oh, no, I shouldn't have said that. I'm being soft. And I'm sneezing. No, really, I'm selfish, but I want this role so bad. I play the ghost, a Marie, Antoinette. How do you like this, hunt? Huh? Let them eat. Move your head a little too. I'm going running. Hey. How far do you run? Depends. I've been training for the marathon. The marathon? That's great. I run too. Oh, yeah? How's this? Congratulations on the book. Thanks. Not to write. I forget the director's name. He's Lithuanian. The poem that Lilia has hung up in her kitchen. I read it, and I think it's great. Great. You don't seem like the poetry type. Look, Van. I'm not. I just loved your poem. Are you a student? Just graduated from San Francisco State. <laughs> Everybody in the play is dead! Your cousin's hot. Is he gay? I don't know. Ask him. No. Chad? <clears throat> are you gay? Christ. Well, that's what I call tact. Well? <laughs> yes. Thanks, hon. All right. Give us a little more cheese. There's a lot of your poem that I don't understand. Only one? I don't know what any of it means. The final waning moon. Don't smile. And the coming of the light. <laughs> I love the way it sounds. Smile. The final waning moon and the coming of the light. He loves you. Oh, I get it. Well, Lily tells me you're looking for a place to stay. New York is so expensive. He lusts for you. Well, a friend of mine wants someone to look after his loft while he's in the light. <laughs> he wants to ravage you. Oh, good. Yeah. He has eight cats, eight tigers. I don't care. Oh, I love that play. It's in Tribeca. I apologize about the book. Where's Tribeca? Did you hear me? On the Isle of Manhattan. We are on the Isle of Manhattan. We are. The main characters are all ghosts. Ooh. Oh, I know that. Right, I'll just throw them a party. That's about all you have to know. A big bash. Is it? We'll do it together. Uh -huh. I'll tell you a few more things. I'll even invite his brother. Will you? you bet your ass I will. Alright, finish. Yay! <laughs> Oh, 
only one month left to live. Now wait just a minute, she tells the doctor. I'll be wanting a second opinion. To which the doctor replies, okay, you're ugly too? <laughs> survived the Les Ghetto during World War II. He'd seen everything in his life, and when it was his time to go, he accepted it. The doctors wanted to go to obscene lengths to keep his body alive, but he refused. I loved him. But most of my patients are more like Margaret. Margaret was in her 90s. She half accepted the fact she was dying, one moment, she's talking to you about which nephew she's definitely cutting out of her will. And the next, she's telling you about a summer vacation she's planning in Skibbereen. She had terminal cancer. But I always go along with what they have to say. My job is not to bring enlightenment, only comfort. Which reminds me, Margaret's family saw her as some kind of prophet. The whole clan was in the room waiting to hear her last words. She had developed a distinct dislike towards her family, and so I was sitting closest to her when she went. And therefore, I could hear what the poor soul was whispering. After it was all over, her family asked me what prayer she'd been uttering. I told them the Lord's Prayer. I didn't have the heart to tell them that what she really was saying was, Oh, shit! <laughs> oh, shit! Oh, shit! I've worked with about 35 people all together. About a third of them have eight. It is the village. Funny thing is, I wasn't promiscuous at all. Oh, please. I swear. I swear. And I never drank too much. A beer once in a while with Mexican food. And I never smoked. And drugs? Forget it. I met Jerry in my sophomore year. We shared a room back at Hofstra. When he and I fell in love, it was zip for me. When the sexual revolution thing happened, I remember I felt retarded. All those wild people doing those wild things. Me, I was going to the opera a lot. Jerry didn't screw around. At least, he swore he didn't. But then, he's not here for me to cross-examine. Because he left. Well, I, uh... when I come here, I don't have to lie. Like, Bernie's doing better. I'm fine. I can even crack up if I want to. Don't worry, I won't do it two weeks in a row. I mean, who is there to talk to in Brewster? These things, they don't happen in Brewster. Police officers don't shoot up heroin and cops don't come down with a gay plague. That's what they call it in Brewster. I can't talk to Bernie. I will never forgive him. Have a chat with the minister? Well, Reverend Miller, I have this little problem. My husband has AIDS, and I have AIDS, and I'm eight months pregnant. <laughs> I know what you guys are going to tell me, right? I'm suffering. 
I'm suffering. I'm, I'm suffering from the homophobia that an oppressive society, blah, blah, blah. Look, man, I never felt good about being gay. Oh, Mary. <laughs> gay was good. It was something I did because I had to. And you know what? It always, it's like a dope, like a dope fiend needs his fix. And it always left me feeling like shit afterwards, and that's the truth. I felt guilty. I still feel that way. Well, um, I was part of a team of people that were trying to teach robots how to use language. Uh, like, hello, my name is Harris. Your new Android model, 3135X. I can vacuum the floors, cook cheeseburgers, play piano. Um, but you know, it's actually much harder to get robots to understand. So, joke. Noun, a clash of values of reality that produce laughter. Have you heard about the disease attacking Jewish American princesses? It's called maids. You die if you don't get it. Ha. 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 And then my coworkers asked me to leave. <laughs> Because, you know, they were afraid of getting AIDS just by looking at me or breathing the same air as me. Because, <laughs> you know, they are scientists. <laughs> anyway, uh, before I left, I actually did program one final robot. Hello, my name is Jack, but you can call me Jackie, your fabulous new Android model 106. Nine. If you wish to use me, and I love being used, just press one of those cunning little buttons on my pecs. Go on. Press one. Press one. Press one. Press one. Press one. Press one. Or are you afraid of me too? Yeah, that was my final stab at Immortality. I don't think I have it anymore. I don't know why I feel guilty as if I'm being disloyal to the group, but I'm getting better. I know it. I just have these swirling glands for which for some reason doesn't go away. That and the loss of weight, which has me lighter than I've been for years. Ladies, watch those ugly pounds just melt away. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. I feel great. I feel the disease just disappearing in me. A tiny percentage of those with the swollen glands come down with the rest. I'm not gonna come here next week. I'm sorry. Rich. Rich. Why do I keep on apologizing? Rich. If I really thought I was coming down with it, we all have options. Rich. Rich. What? Here, feel my glands. You are such a hypochondriac, Saul. You think they're swollen? I think they're okay. But your neck is grotesquely misshapen. Here, let me fix. <laughs> you are such a hypochondriac, oh, Saul. I'm a hypochondriac. Yeah. You and your vitamins. Oh, well, you and your yoga. You and your wheatgrass. Oh, well, it's working. My ratio's up. All right. Your T cells are up, your suppressors are down. New York, New York! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I love you. You know that? If you love me, then get off my chest. No, I wouldn't dare. You would try to get up and get even with me. All right, let's call the truce. One, two, three, truce. <sighs> <sighs> You're right. You never should have trusted me. No, what fair, most unfair. Fun fair. Oh. The winner gets his way with the loser. <laughs> Having vanquished the good ship Socrates, the savage pirate chief Big Me <laughs> takes his first mate as his captain. <laughs> oh, no, Captain Big Me. I've had the eye on you since that time we met in Bangalore. <laughs> you can't escape me now, matey. I shall ravish you for the <laughs> No, I'm pure blood and noble born. No, no. Oh, oh, oh. Perhaps. 
I'm sure it's nothing. What? 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 Hotline, this is Barney. Oh my god, it's her again. Are you a gay man? Ma'am, didn't we speak on the phone a few days ago? <laughs> oh, she doesn't stop. Look, we're all worried here. Is he bisexual? Calm down. Is he an IV all, drug user? It's not all that easy to get it if you take a few precautions. Look, okay, I'll get it. Please hold on. <sighs> Ma'am, I'm sorry. It wasn't my intention to insult you. Hotline. Shit! Lost in fucking phone. So, what makes you think he has AIDS? Hello? Oh, gosh. He's what? Yes, the disease is spread through the blood and the semen. Samoans are not a risk group. <laughs> Samoans. So wear a condom. Um, ma'am, there are half a zillion diseases he has symptoms uh -uh. of. Uh -uh. Make him wear a condom. You know, please hold. This thing is acceptable. Yes, yes. Uh, hotline, this is Bar. <gasps> yeah, and your mother eats turds in hell. No, thank you. <laughs> myself? Myself? I don't do it on the first date. Um, oh, I would definitely see a physician about that. Okay, let's see, let's see. There's spots. Yes, I would go see a doctor. I am nails, not a doctor. Rips, chains, jacking off, porno. I mean, use your imagination. Ma'am, I'm so sorry you're lonely. Our motto is on me, not in me. <sighs> but we are very, very busy here, and I cannot stay in the line with you all day, so. <laughs> You have a very nice voice too, but I'm seeing someone, so. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Thanks, thanks. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Spots. Ugh. Love it. I'm not seeing anyone. <sighs> what are you talking about? I was just saying how much I love being celibate. <laughs> So the fuck are you? Tired, broke, depressed. Tim's moving out this afternoon. Well, you asked. Ugh, I hear you have a new PWA. I'm sorry about Tim, and yes, yes, I have a new baby, a writer. I mean, why do I get all the tough customers? Oh, because you're so tough. So good. So mean. <laughs> Weathered by life like the saddle under a cowboy's ass. Ugh, oh, I could never be a CMP. I don't know where you get your energy. Drugs. Okay. <laughs> I don't do that anymore either. Look, what do I do? Look, I wait tables, I answer phones, I work with ingrates like Rich. I mean, boy, is he pissed, you know. He calls me Miss Nightingale or Florence, and he throws dishes, he curses at his roommates, he won't cooperate with the doctor, no, no, no. And he won't even see his shrink. He isn't interested in any support group. And he shits in the fucking bathtub. I mean, he shits. Is he incontinent? Fuck no, he ain't that sick yet. He said it was convenient. I don't know why he shit in the tub. Oh, a real sweetheart. I mean, I'm going out of my mind here. Like, thank God they put him in the hospital. First time. Yup. Uh, well, knowing me, I'd probably be a real bastard, so. I wouldn't take it lying down. Oh, you take it any way you could get it. Okay, go on, girlfriend. Uh, you know me, if I got sick, I would probably just shove a time bomb up my chush and then drop in on Timmy for tea and meet his new lover, Jimmy. Jimmy. Oh, yeah, I swear, <laughs> Jimmy. <sighs> oh, oh, Tim has told me so much about you. Oh, I've just been dying to meet you. And kaboom! There goes Jimmy and Timmy. Jimmy and Timmy, oh my god! <laughs> Ain't it a guess? Gag me for sure. Oh, for sure. <laughs> um, uh, I'm cat speaking. When, when are we gonna get some more help around here? I, <laughs> I am going out of my mind! 
Hotline, this is Barney. <laughs> Are you a gay man? Are you a gay man? Details are you keeping from me? To let him lie there like a dog? What else? What else? You, buy us it. Get that wet back out of here. Buy us it, buy us it. I don't do nothing, senor. He's crazy. Get out of here before I breathe on you. I want, I want to buy us it. Mr. Farrell, please. Come back later. Must turn it, por favor. Go back to your picket line. You want a wage hike, though, like You're trying to get me to private and clean my own room. Sister, please cooperate. He didn't say anything. He won't come near my bed, but he's not afraid to touch my money. You misunderstood him. El dinero está limpio, a tu madre. Maricón. They're unionizing primates now. Yo no entiendo. Yeah, I go in. I go in. I shouldn't have told him about Chuck. Better you than anyone else. Oh, buzz, 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 buzz. Will you be still a moment so I can check your blood pressure? Are you a union member too? What shall I do? A good friend of his just passed away. AIDS? The Undertaker's Union. You know what? Just go AIDS. away. I'm on strike too. I refuse to participate in the documentation of my own demise. She's only trying to find another statistic for your center of disease control. I'm a patient woman, but I swear he wants me to lose it. That's what he's asking. Lady, fuck off. off. He's upset. Please. Okay, you win. I'm losing it. Are you happy? I'm angry, angry, Mr. Farrell. Will you please go? A person can only take so much. I give up. I don't have to put up with this shit. I'm going to go speak to my supervisor. Three gold stars for self-assertion. <laughs> I should have told him about you. I haven't told Romeo the news that Juliet is dead. Balthazar makes a tearful exit. I don't know what to say. I said Balthazar makes a tearful exit. I know how you feel. No matter, get me gone and hire those horses. I love Chip too. Oh, thou art deceived. You know, he told me he was so sorry for the way he treated you. Do the thing I bid thee. He didn't belong in New York. He thought he was so sophisticated, but he was just a kid from Mendocino. I'm so sorry to let him go home. The I'm messenger so must go. The hero wishes to be alone with his confidant. Tomorrow. I'm gonna have a crown with some Margo. She, she's a vegetarian. I'll be up. I've gotta talk to Mick. He's irrational on the subject of AIDS. He can go to hell. He's so afraid he can move out. I won't let them come between us. You're my buddy. African quadruped, G and U, Hitler's father, five letters, hmm. Herman Hitler, hmm. oh fuck, that's six, uh, Werner, Rudy, Putsy, fuck, 
Oh, thank God. Jewish roll starts with the B6 letters. Bagels. <laughs> oh, shit. I need a Y. Yowies. E. Y. Nice. Short for Bialystok, a large industrial city in eastern Poland. Hometown of Ludwig Zimmerman, the inventor of Esperanto, an artificial international language. Alois Hitler, A L O I S Hitler. Outclassed again. Why do I even bother? He knows everything. I used to spend all my time in the libraries when I was a kid. My childhood was. Uh... If I had a father like yours, I'd probably do the same thing. Well, well thanks to that son of a bitch. I knew how many metric tons of coal the Benelux countries produced per annual and the capital city of the Grand Duchy of Liechtenstein. I give up. The dues. Miss Trivial Pursuit. Mm -hmm. I knew to which great linguistic family the Telugu language of, of southern India belongs to. Telugu? Isn't that the national dish of Botswana? The Dravidian. I've always loved words. I wrote poetry when I was a kid, and my brother made fun of me. Winter, winter, how you glinter, with holidays array, and the snow we all know is here all day. I was eight or nine when I wrote that, and I had just come in from sledding down Indian Hill, a steep road that connected to Jefferson Heights in the valley. Yeah, you showed me on our grand tour of West Jersey. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a late afternoon right before sundown. The sky was intensely blue and intensely cold. You could almost see the stars. For some reason, my parents weren't home when I came back. So I stood there in my nana's damp kitchen top table, dripping in my frozen corduroys, and, and wrote that poem. You comfortable? I was a good kid. I was lonely and scared all the time. I was so desperate to find people like myself that I, I looked for them in the indexes of books under H. I eventually found them. But not in books. Next thing you know, I moved to the city. Became a typical office worker slash writer. I hated my job. I grew a beard and wore sandals, hoping they would fire me and give me permanent unemployment. All I wanted to do was just stay at home in my rent-controlled apartment, drink bourbon, write poetry, which I did for a while, and I loved it. The apartment got filthy, as did I. And the only time I would go out was at night to pick up guys. And that's when I found you at a porno theater. You set myself down, you took my picture, I jogged, you bought a loft. And raised a cat. We loved each other very much. But that wasn't enough for me. I don't think you ever understood this song, but you were my muse. You were Saul. I loved you. I wanted someone to write poems to. During our marriage, I had almost stopped writing entirely. I felt stifled even though our apartment appeared in New York Magazine. <laughs> and then I met Chet. Left you in a word, Chet. We stayed at the Chelsea Hotel for a while. We did a lot of cocaine. <laughs> and we wrote a lot of poetry. And the catering business was booming. And the New Yorker published a story of mine. And I ran in the marathon. I was on a roll. Did I ever tell you the first time I was treating on the East River Drive? I didn't realize how dark and narrow the city streets were until I got to the river and realized there was a fucking river. The sky was the same twilight when I was a kid. I came from the darkness into the light. I was running downtown and I made this bend and out of nowhere, up ahead, the Manhattan Bridge and then the Brooklyn Bridge, and then one after the other, and my earphones were playing handles while you're firing music. I couldn't get better than that. I was running and crying.
crying from gratitude. I came from the darkness into the light. I'm running and I'm telling God, I didn't know how big you were or how good you were. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Next morning, I came down with the flu. Stayed in bed for a couple of days. I got better, but my throat stayed a little sore and my glands a little swollen. Sleeping so well. I'm sleeping okay. No, 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 just, 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 just listen. Just listen. Okay? I want you to go to the doctors, tell them you're not sleeping so well, and that Valium doesn't work, but a friend gave you some Secondol, and Secondol is strong enough. No! Pills. I won't do it. I tried holding the pills here, but the nurse watches me. I can't do that. Again. I don't want to end up like Chet. I won't listen. <laughs> If you love me, you do this for me. Don't say I have something no, that's I can't handle this. I'll, I'll go, go right, right out the window, window I, I swear. Don't, don't do it. Don't you see? It's the only way. Just no. get the pills. Just get the pills. No. You would want me to have them. And when the lesions come above my neck and I don't look the same, you would want me to have them too. Help me. Help me. It's okay. It's okay. Not now. No. Tomorrow. No. The day after. No. Oh my god. I think that's your brother. Oh, come back. No, I was just going. It's all right, really. I've been here for a while. I'm really. interrupting. No. Unless you plan to come into intimate contact with me or my body fluids, none of the shit you have on is necessary. The sign says oh, that please refrain your brotherly affection for my sake. God knows what kind of disease you might have brought in with me. I've been here for a while. You guys haven't seen each other yet. Yeah, you take a break here. Think about what I said. It stopped raining. I'm going for a walk. Have a nice walk. <laughs> so, good seeing you. Saul. Right. Yeah. Nothing to forgive. Uh, Betty sends her love. She uh, she sent along this tin of butter crunch. You're uh, you're on a special diet, are you? I I told Betty I thought you might be on one of those uh, macrobiotic diets. I read in the papers that it's helped some people with, uh, with uh, AIDS. Right. Uh, I keep a file of clippings of all the latest medical developments, and uh, it looks like they're going to have a vaccine soon. The French are starting That's to That's to prevent this. AIDS. I already have AIDS. Well, there's this new drug, AZT, and I'm on it. Thing. Right. So, uh, how are you doing? I have a 
supposed to start coding. A hitherto rare form of skate catching that is spreading. I'm on chemotherapy and it nauseates me. I suspect my hair will fall off. I also have a fungal infection of the throat called candidiasis or thrush. My life expectancy, well, I think I have a better chance of winning the lottery. Other than that, I'm fine. How are you? I'm, I'm sorry. Pat sends her love. She uh, she won her school swimming competition, and so I registered her for the South Jersey Championship. Oh, I forgot. She uh, she made this for you. part about having AIDS. Stop. Having to tell your parents that you're Haitian. Get it? I came here to see if I could help you. Oh, Skip, what do you want? I don't want anything. Everything I own is going to Saul. I don't want anything. Except for the stuff Mom left us. I told Saul, but that's going to go to you. Except for the Barcelona chair, that's going to go to Saul. I don't care about a Barcelona chair. The copyright to my book is also going to Saul. Why, why are you doing this to me? So you don't want my worldly possessions such as they are? Stop. You want me to relieve you of Stop. your guilt? Fine. I hereby exonerate you of sin, of being ashamed of having a queer brother, Stop. and being a coward in the face Stop of... Stop it! Don't! I don't want to see you. Don't, don't touch me. Stop. No. Don't. No. Richie. Don't. 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 Richie. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Stop. Don't Richie. touch me. Don't, Richie. Don't, don't, don't Richie. touch me. Don't. I don't care. I'm glad you 
appreciate. I'll be back tomorrow with uh, with Mary Pat. She's been dying. To, she's been really <laughs> wanting to come by, and uh, and she's been writing poetry. And so I thought I'd love to see her. Tell Betty thanks for the, the butter crunch. Yeah, yeah. Good seeing you. So. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bye. I won't get upset. No, I won't get upset. What's the matter? No, it's my problem. What? Rich, I thought about what? it. What? God damn it! That prick doesn't remember my name! After how many years we've been together? We're together. Pardon me, I forgot we got an annulment from the Pope. Fuck it, I won't get upset. This is my brother. I said to... fuck it! This is a big step for him. Your brother hates my fucking guts. Haven't you ever my told him that I didn't turn you queer? I didn't my give you AIDS either. My brother knows that. Why do you always defend him? What about me? So my brother has certain feelings, even though he's not a card carrying member of the uh -huh. Lavender Early. He's well, let's hear it for our working class here. You never tried talking to him. You're so self centered that it never actually occurred. I'm self centered. Now, to my wait brother. one minute. I'm so self centered that I was willing to go and get you the pills. You got the pills? <laughs> no, my man. I was willing to go to Christopher Street where all the drug dealers hang out. Hey, what's that, man? What's that? Nice night. I told you to go to the doctors. Looking okay, ass. In the A's, right. smoking acid. I say, right. nice night. <laughs> Real nice. So, so, what's taking me? What you want? All you would have had to tell the doctor was, my friend has AIDS, and I'm not sleeping very I'm well. I'm not sleeping very well. I have just the thing. Yo, step it into my office. I've got you. Big acid mess you... ups, downs. I'll take 100. That would be two dollars a cap. Well, forty is enough. I wanted enough for both of us. You got the cash. I got the stash. Tristan and he's older. Hey man, you want them or not? You don't understand anything. Look man, I can't handle all that emotion. You stuff. never understood anything. Give me the greens and I'll give you the rest. Oh, the okay? widow throws what? herself upon the husband's funeral pyre. Shit! 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 You selfish bastard! What stopped you? From hitting you? Well, from buying the pills. The pills. I bought the damn pills. Nothing stopped me. Thank you. But well, where are they? I threw them out. Why? Let me help you live. What's so hot about living when you're covered with lesions and you're coming down with a new infection every day? I just want to be no, able to quietly I won't argue the logic of it just walk them around I just in case they don't get the no, muscle. I'll go out of here and get them myself. You're crazy. Yo, I don't need you to do no. my dirty work. Where did they get my I want Where did they put my clothes? I, I want to get out of here. Where's the duck on you? Oh, 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 fuck. Oh, oh, fuck. Oh, oh, oh. You idiot. I tried to do what you asked me to do. No, just no, like don't apologize. Okay, well, I want you to understand something. I understand. Just listen, it's important. I made up my mind. I was going to give you half of the pills and keep the other half for myself. I was walking past Sheridan Square. It started to drizzle again. You've never seen Sheridan Square look grungier. A drunk was pissing on the pathetic little flowers. And you know that crazy little lady who always sings on the top of her lungs off key? Well, she was there too. And my favorite, a guy with his belly out to here, well, he was taking a dump. I get the picture. Anyway, well, there I was with the pills in my pocket, contemplating our suicide. I was getting wet and cold. As 
I pass the square, second I'll sing too slow. You don't have a monopoly on the pain. Oh, I never thought after. Just that. shut up! Well, anyway, I stopped in front of the pleasure chest. I looked up, and there in the window, I saw sex toys and multicolored jock straps. They were lit by this red neon sign. I just, I just scraped, help me, God. Which is funny coming from an atheist. And let me tell you, I said it out loud. And then you could walk again. Well, it wasn't exactly such a miracle, thank God. Well, there I was in front of the sex shop. I looked down. And I saw this puddle. I know this is going to sound stupid, Couldn't but... sound more stupider than the rest. Well, in this dirty little puddle was a reflection of the red neon sign. It was beautiful. And the whole street was shiny with so many beautiful colors. And they were changing, you know, as the lights go on and off. I don't know how long I stood there, but a phrase came to my mind. The Lord taketh and the Lord giveth. You blew your punchline. It's the other way around. <laughs> well, there went $200 down the sewer. Take it off your taxes. Don't you understand? I just don't have the right to take your life or mine. The miracle of the pleasure chest? Just hang in there, Rach. Our Lady of Christopher Street. Well, maybe I am being selfish. I want you here. I need you. My future isn't exactly that promising. I'll take you as is. What's gonna happen when it gets worse? It's gonna get worse. I'll I'll be here with you no matter what happens. Will you? I promise. Oh shit. Well, what do you want me to say? You're so goddamn noble. And how do you want me to be? Well, I can't afford to be noble. The only thing holding me together is rage. It's not fair. Why me? Why not you? Maybe I'm next. No one knows. I reserve the right to put an end to all this shit. All right. Well, if you kill yourself, then you won't be buried in a hollow ground, and you'll go to hell with all us Jews. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they have a separate aid section in the cemetery, so I don't infect the other fucking corpses. I do, I promise. Prodigies and signs. Why not? It's the end of an era. What do you think happens next? Will you? I need you so much. Paradise in a pub. You couldn't resist, could you? <laughs> Gone. Don't be mad. You know I didn't. I know you didn't mean that, but what's gonna happen after I die? Do you think things go on and on? I hope not. I hope so. I don't know. Do you think this is all the time I have left? I hope not. Will there ever be a place as sweet as this one? I like it here, even though I'm going through a lot of difficulty. Where do we get to come back? Where do we get to come back to? I don't feature leaving here to some goddamn Nampa swamp in a Z center of a provincial galaxy living my life as a fucking insect. But if it's a kind of educational process to which each piece of the universe gets to discover their own true divine nature, then 
a methane bomb on, on Jupiter would serve just as well as a, as a meadow in the Berkshires. I want to be cremated. And I want my ashes spread on that apple tree on Jake's pasture. And I want you to take a bite of that apple from the tree. And I want you to think of You'd be the worm in it. <laughs> oh, Saul. There's a cafe way over by Tompkins Square Park, off of B. Mm -hmm. What about it? It holds 10 tables. It has the scuzziest art on the walls. I want to read my work there. You turn down the Y? I. All sorts of people go there. Gay, straight, with their crazy haircuts and their ears pierced 99 different ways while well, they go there. And there's a guitarist there, and they sit there quietly and listen. They look newborn, but slightly depraved. I want to read my work there when I get out of here. And you'll be there taking pictures. Forgive me for being such a fuck. You're a fat. You're a fruit. <laughs> no. If you took precaution. It's what? 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 Always do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Do you want it? Only if we're careful. Yeah. Do you want to? I want to. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> someone comes in. So what? Right. <laughs> what are you waiting for? I'm scared. So am I. Mm. Do you think we should? I want to. Close the fucking curtain. extraordinarily funny poems about the ward. His lover's there all the time, and he's got a lot of friends visiting, and both families. I hope that it keeps up. It's only his second time in the hospital. They get a lot of visitors at first, but as the illness continues, the visitors stop coming, and they're left with only me. But Something tells me that's not gonna happen in his case. You should see how his lover takes care of him. God forbid they treat Rich badly. Saul swoops in and he lets them have it. <laughs> He's making a real pain in the ass of himself, which is how you have to be in this situation sometimes. He should be out of the hospital again in about a week or so, for a while. He's a fighter. The angry phase is just about over, 
and the bargaining phase is beginning. If he behaves like a good little boy, God will do what Rich tells him to do. I certainly hope that God does. I don't know anymore. Sometimes I think I'm an atheist. No, not really. It's more like I'm angry at God. How can he do this? I have a lot of denial. I am angry and I bargain with God. I have a long way to go towards acceptance. Maybe I should resign. Maybe I'm suffering from burnout. But what would I do if I didn't go to St. Vincent's? It's truly a privilege to be with people when they're dying. Sometimes they tell you the most amazing things. The other night, Jacques Jacques, he's this real queen. There's no other word for it. He told me what he misses the most in the hospital is his corset and high heels. He's all of 90 pounds and he's half dead, but I admire his spirit. And the way they treat him, Sometimes they won't even bring his food to his bed. And I'm afraid to say anything for fear that they take it out on him. Damn them! I was much more idealistic when I first started. Last night, I painted his nails for him. Flaming red. He loved it. 